Have you ever tried to change something in your life without actually making any change in your life? This is not a trick question. I'm sure that many of us have heard the have heard the saying of what insanity is. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I know for myself, I can get lost in this trap. I can get lost in wanting things to change, needing things to change, but then not actually doing what is required for that change to happen. So today I want to talk to you about the the importance of renewing your mind in scripture to get a different way of viewing things, a different way of thinking, a different way of acting. That is what living a Christian life is all about. My name is Michelle and if you're new here, what you will find here is biblical encouragement that encourages you to grow and build your own relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because that is what really impacts your walk with the Lord. And if you come here all the time, then I just want to thank you for allowing me to speak biblical truth into your life. So today we're talking about the importance of renewing our mind, the importance of doing something so that change will happen in our lives. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For me, that was the first verse that the Lord had brought to my attention when I first became a believer. Now, obviously, at least for me, I think it was obvious, that was because I was so worldly. Like, I had lived almost 30 years following the ways of the world, thinking like the world, acting like the world, you know? And that was a pattern for me. And how did I get into that pattern? By immersing myself in the world by thinking thoughts of the world by watching things that just represented the world like I never branched out into the area of reading scripture until I got saved yes in 2001 I did find um, the self-help market so to speak I had um, found this this cassette tape at this uh, Goodwill store and um, I'm so thankful that I bought it because I believe that those years, those 12 years that I immersed myself in personal development were not wasted, okay? God uses everything to, to build this up. He uses everything that we have gone through in our lives to just grow in a deeper understanding of who he really is to us. What his character means for each one of us, his, um, his faithfulness, his grace, his mercy. As we look back over our lives, we can just see how he has always been there. He's always been faithful, even when we weren't. So the Self-help market led me to this book that ultimately ended up uh, saving me. I got saved through a book that I thought was just another personal development self-help book. It was The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. And by the time I read that book, I had already known the power of our mind. I had already known, known that it was a good idea to focus on the positive and not the negative. I had already knew that in order for something to change in my life, I had to make change regardless of what it was. If I needed my thoughts to change, then I had to intentionally put in new information so that I could think new thoughts. If I needed my actions to change, I had to intentionally take new action, right? I also read this book that said nothing happens until something moves. 
And those books really helped me understand how to live life more intentionally. And then when I came to know the Lord in reading the Bible, the Bible talks about the, that exact same that exact same approach, that exact same way of living, but only it also includes the power to do it. Without the Word of God and the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, it's just another self-help book. But friends, I want to encourage you that this is not just another self-help book. This book, the Bible, will radically change our lives if we allow it, if we read it, if we meditate on it, and if we allow Scripture to renew our minds so that we're thinking different thoughts, so that we're, we're taking new action, that we're, we're living a new way than what we have previously lived when we were part of this world, this book will radically, God will radically transform your life through his word. The other scripture I want to read here is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And it says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The way that we're thoroughly equipped for the good works that God has for us to do is by reading scripture, right? It is by immersing ourselves in scripture. Every single day, we have to be reading God's word so that it can be getting down deep on the inside of us and so that we can live it out. You know, James talks about how we are not to just read the word of God and not do what it says because we're deceiving ourselves. We must do what the word says. It's the same way with living out the fruit of the Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The only way we're going to live out the fruit of the Spirit is if we are in the Word of God and allowing it to transform us and allowing us to take action on what we have read. And that is through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. Okay, we don't change ourselves. God changes us. But there is a part we must play in that process. And we must be in the Word of God because it's useful for teaching. Do we need to learn something new? Then we need to be in the Word of God. Do we need to understand how to live this Christian life, which all of us do? Then we must be in the Word of God. This The Word is also useful for rebuking. Is there something in your life that you need not to be doing as a Christian, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? The Word will point that out and it will rebuke us and correct us. It says that the word rebukes and it's correcting and training in righteousness. So if we're doing something that we are not supposed to do, that we are not bringing glory to God by doing it, then the word is going to rebuke us for it. It's going to correct us on it and it's going to train us how to live a life that is righteous, that brings God glory only the Word of God is going to do that for us. So I just want to encourage you today to stop wishing. Stop wanting things to change and not doing anything about it. We have got to be in the Word of God. And listen, friend, this message is for me just as much as it may be for you. I can get complacent in my Christian walk. And it's wrong. It's not the best that God has for me. There's always something new to learn in this Christian life. And so I just want to encourage you to stay in the word. Don't neglect spending time in God's word and allowing it to transform your thinking. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord. It's your word that transforms us. Lord, your word teaches us and corrects us and rebukes us and trains us in righteousness. So Lord, help each one of us to be in your word every single 
day so that you can do the work that only you can. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss an encouraging word. I put out a new video every Wednesday. All right, take care. God bless.